Chestnut has got to be one of the least liked and least used starter Pokemon. But this thing is actually kind of a beast. It's got a solid base 107 attack, and more importantly, it has 122 defense. One of its best ways of attacking is using Body Press. This uses Chestnut's defense stat and damage calculation, and this allows you to save investment for HP. It also has a pretty unique ability called Bulletproof. This blocks all damage from ball and bomb moves. While it blocks obvious moves like Bullet Seed, there's some that are a little less obvious, like the fact that it blocks popular moves like Aura Sphere, Focus Blast, and even Sludge Bomb, to name a few. While this ability may not make a difference a lot of the time, Chestnut can catch people off guard with this and be a fun defensive Pokemon in general. Alright, look, the forecast for today, Sandy. I've got myself a pretty interesting Sand team that features some lesser used stuff, and if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It only takes you a second, I promise you won't regret it, and let's go ahead and jump into the match. So my opponent has both a pretty interesting and honestly kind of scary team, and it makes for an insane battle. So, they're going to go ahead and lead off with the Ditto, as I decide to toss out the Lantern. I wanted to get myself out here nice and shiny, glistening, and also get a little pivot with the Volt Switch, but uh, they turn into me, and I'm thinking, okay, this is actually, it's an interesting kind of dynamic here, right? Because I could be working with the Volt Absorb, so it's not really free for them to click Volt Switch, but they do, and they end up getting the fast pivot here, which actually kind of ends up in my favor because that thing is going to be a choice scarf ditto. It's going to be faster than like whatever it turns into unless I'm scarfed. So considering that I'm slower, I can go for the second volt switch, which shows me what they bring in. And I just bop the old fur at one time and then I can get a match up here. Also, I do want to apologize for some reason. My game audio didn't record for this match for literally no reason at all. So that is annoying, but I decide, you know, it doesn't look nearly dry enough out here. I'm going to end up pivoting into the Hippowdon, who sets up the sand stream, and now we're dry, we're a wall, and we're here to do some Hippowdon shit, where, at this point, I'm kind of reluctant to set up the Stealth Rock here, both because I'm looking at a Furret who could potentially tidy up, but also, they have the Cinderace with the Court Change on their team. So, I decide to instead just go right for the damage with the Earthquake. They likely expect me to set up the Stealth Rock here, and they end up going for the Coil. And the long boy, Coil Furret, is actually low-key a threat, but with one defense boost at the health that it's at, an Earthquake is luckily able to take care of it. So, down goes the Furret, we now have our Sand up, and they decide to bring in the Cinderace. So, Cinderace is kind of an interesting switch in here. I kind of imagine maybe they go for, you know, something like a Terra here. And regardless, they're not going to be able to, you know, really hit me super effectively, unless they have something crazy. I'm kind of reluctant to go for that Earthquake, I do want to conserve the Hippo you know, for the sand for later. And I decide, I'm just gonna scout what this thing wants to do. I'm just gonna end up switching right back into the Lantern, who should be able to take any attack from this thing, at least decently nicely, um, and see what happens. They end up going for the Trailblaze. So, it turns out, with the ability, they're gonna turn into the Grass type, which is kind of likely why they predict the Earthquake from the Hippo, turning themselves into ground, and they get a Speed Boost. So, my Lantern ass is kind of bamboozled. We find ourselves in a little bit of a weird position here, where now this thing has a Speed Boost, but he's running quick as hell, and I, I do feel like I could probably conserve Lantern for, you know, a sack later, because I do have a secret weapon up my sleeve, and that comes in the form of the Chestnut. I'm going to switch directly into this thing. I imagine they're just going to click the Trailblaze again. There's pretty much no reason not to. It's kind of just a free kill and another free speed boost, so I switch this thing in. I do get Trailblazed, um, as he actually is going to take a little bit of Rocky Helmet Chip, which is super nice for me. So you may be thinking, damn, I probably shouldn't have gone into you know, my grass type on the, the fire type as Cinderace, but there is a reason for that and you will see why. So here's the thing, I'm going to end up just going for the body press for some damage here and they're actually going to go ahead and commit a Terra here. And this could be really bad for me if, you know, they don't do what I expect them to do. So it turns out they're actually Stellar Terra on the Cinderace and that's actually low-key pretty crazy. Stellar Terra, while it's not super great in certain situations, it actually can work super well. So they go for the Pyro Ball, which is exactly what I was hoping they would do. And it turns out with Bulletproof, we actually block Pyro Ball, which is some nonsense. I'm able to then sit on this thing. I don't quite grab the Knockout, which, you know, is unfortunate. It actually knocks it down to Citrus Berry range. Uh, however, them not being able to Pyro Ball this, the, uh, the Chestnut is probably something not a lot of people think about. Um, but Bulletproof, low-key, kind of goes crazy sometimes. So, at this point, I'm just going to go for another Body Press here. But they're actually just going to go ahead and pull out the old fake fly and go for the bounce, which is quite the unique set here because bounce is definitely something that is going to take you know, my ass out with the grass and fighting type. So I have an interesting position here to where I can either switch out into something that I know would be faster or I could bust out the Terra 
turn myself into a steel type to take the hit and then knock him out as they come down. As I realized, I'm not going to have anything faster because they literally have doubled speed with the two uh, trailblazes. So that's pretty much my best play at this point is to bust out the steel Terra. It actually works out pretty, pretty nicely in a situation where their only fire coverage is going to be something like the pyro ball. Uh, but I put the axe on my head and Chestnut's like, yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and land on that, buddy. That's going to that's gonna feel real nice. They do, in fact, bounce on the axe, does absolutely nothing, uh, take some Rocky Helmet chip, and then I can finish them off with one more body press. So that's good for a couple reasons, both because, you know, Cinderace is extremely scary for my team, especially if it has speed boost because it outspeeds, like, my Sand Slash even in the sand. But also, they have committed the Terra, and I don't have to worry uh, about any kind of stray Terras coming out. So... They're going to end up going into the Ditto again here, and this thing being around, honestly, puts some crazy pressure. Ditto is just such a slept on Pokemon. But this thing comes in, it's obviously going to turn into me without the Steel Terra, and here's where it's actually kind of unfortunate. Because I'm Steel Terra, I know that they have the super effective Body Press, which I can at least live one of them. They take some Rocky Helmet Chip, and I take this opportunity to lay down a nice little layer of some mid-game spikes. With the Furret gone, and the Cinderace, there's no way that they can get rid of those spikes, and that's going to be able to punish some switch-ins a little bit, also potentially break some focus sashes. And at this point, I'm thinking, okay, either you know I stay in here with Chestnut and let this thing go down, or I sack off the Lantern to get a free switch. I decide since I'm pretty much slower than everything, and I'm at this low of health, I may as well just stay in here. They're forced to touch me one more time. And that's at least going to give him a little bit more Rocky Helmet chip for later. And the Chestnut does go down, but this does give me a bit of momentum in that now I can go into whatever I like. Now, the problem is I can't, I don't have a lot that wants to come in on my own damn Chestnut. So what I decide to do is I'm going to end up bringing in the Hippowdon once again. I, I want to put the pressure up with the sand, but also since I don't like this thing being transformed into my Chestnut, what I can actually do instead of the Ice Fang is just go for a Whirlwind. What that does is it covers for a potential switch. Now I know I have the benefit of knowing their entire moveset, obviously, as they don't have any grass coverage. Uh, I, I think maybe they switch out. They do in fact just go for that body press. I decide to Whirlwind. I don't know how the hell this Hippo uses Whirlwind if I'm going to be real, but I blow on him and I get him out of there and that drags in the Zorark. Now, this is actually nice because this thing comes in without a disguise and all tentacle hairs over here is a little bit less scary when he's not pretending to be someone else, like a damn catfish. So, uh, with that in mind, I know that I can likely take an attack from this thing, but I actually have a pretty good spot here to conserve the hippo, end up going into the lantern for some sack action, and what that's going to do is allow me to switch into whatever I like for free. And I have a couple different options. So, Edison comes in, he's like, hey, what a good day to be alive. And then I just get absolutely, you know, demolished by the Shadow Ball, which is actually fine. Now, the main reason why I also wanted to set up that layer of spikes is because of the Zorak. A lot of the time, these things are running with the Focus Sash, but also, you know, with the with the Sandstorm up, it breaks, it breaks the Sash anyway. So, regardless, now I get a switch into whatever I like, and I feel like, you know what, it's Sand Slash time, baby. This thing can come in. I'm actually, I'm running Adamant Nature on this thing, but I should actually just barely be faster than the Zorark here. So a Shadow Ball does a lot to me, but I can also threaten this thing with that knockoff, and that is exactly what I'm gonna do. Sand Slash goes full on zoom mode. I knock his ass off, that does take care of the Zorark, did not get to turn into anybody else. I also, just to salt it or put sand in his wound per se, I knock his boots off, <laughs> and uh, down goes the Zorark. So Sand Slash, we're sitting actually in a pretty decent position here because you know, we're in the sand, we're faster than everything, but what we're not going to have a great matchup against is the Superior. Now, Superior is always scary, a little bit less scary without the ability to Terra. Uh, and at this point, you know, I don't want to take a Leaf Storm to the face as I know that, you know, an Earthquake's not going to do quite enough. Plus, I don't either have, you know, the Sub or the Swords Dance up. So, I actually decided to switch into the Gengar. Now, the reason is I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me, and then I can outspeed it pretty nicely. So, they end up going for the Giga Drain, and... That's not going to do a whole lot. We also get the Cursed Body to activate, which is actually kind of funny. So it disables the Giga Drain there as, you know, I imagine maybe they're not working with something like the Leaf Storm if it's some type of different superior. Um, I would love to also click the Sludge Bomb here. Here's the reason why I cannot, and that is because they have a Lucario in the back. So thinking maybe they switch into the Lucario here, I end up going for the trick. Also, tricking the superior isn't the worst thing in the world because, as you're going to notice here, they end up locking themselves into coil. So, coil is not something you see ran on superior if it's going to be a contrary set, but it turns out this thing is actually going to be overgrow, and a coil setup 
you know, with the with the superior is pretty interesting depending on kind of what set they're working with. So uh, they go for that coil there, and at this point, they probably expect me, you know, they're locked in, and I know that they're going to switch. So I'm expecting the Sludge Bomb. I'm going to end up going for the Shadow Ball instead. It works perfectly because we do draw in uh, the Lucario. Steel-type comes in thinking, hey, good day to come in and take a Sludge Bomb. Nope. I'd instead just throw my balls at him, and that is going to be enough to actually knock out the Lucario, which is amazing. Gengar is tr it's honestly such a threat. This thing, it puts so much pressure. So... Now they get to switch back into the damn Ditto. Now, the reason why Ditto sucks coming in here is because it takes a little bit of spike, but it also is going to turn into me. And it turns out this little flubber asshole is a better version of me because with the scarf, it can outspeed me and kill me with a Shadow Ball. But I do want to conserve my Gengar. It's going to be good against that superior, and I kind of need something to be at least able to take an attack. So... I decide to switch. I'm going to go back into the Hippo. It's likely that they do just two-hit KO me with the Shadow Ball here, but I can at least set back up the Sandstream and put the Sand Slash back in a pretty good position where, you know, the Shadow Ball does end up looking like it's a two-hit KO. And thinking a few turns ahead here, I bring in the Sand Slash. I'm able to outspeed this thing and, you know, end up knocking it out with an Earthquake. But the problem still becomes uh, that superior. But with it being Choice Scarfed into a move, it's not going to be nearly as scary. So... They do just go for that second Shadow Ball here. It takes out the Hungry Hungry Hippo. And now kind of my best, really only answer is to go into the Sand Slash. Now the problem is, of course, Ditto being such an asshole like this thing is, you know, with that Choice Scarf, it's actually, it's going to be able to outspeed me even with the Sand Rush, which, you know, doubles my speed in the sand. Uh, but, you know, Sand Slash, he's not the, the fastest little fella. But I go into Sand Slash here because looking at the damage counts, I know that a Shadow Ball, it does like 80-ish percent to me, and I should be able to take at least one of them, barring a crit. So I decide to go for the knockoff here. They, of course, do move first. Uh, their best play is to just go for that Shadow Ball. Knocks me down to 26. We barely hang on because Sand Slash is a legend. I can then knock this thing off. And down goes the Gengar. It also does get rid of uh, my it Cursed Bodies, my knockoff, which doesn't really matter, but kind of just a dick move sealing both my Mon and my ability. But, um, you know, I take some Life Orb Recoil here. And their final Pokemon is going to be that Superior, who we do know is Choice Scarf. And this thing has no opportunity to set up uh, actually interested to see what kind of moveset this thing is working with because it has like the Giga Drain for the longevity and the coil to catch people off guard. Uh, I just decided to go for that Earthquake. I know I actually am faster with the uh, with the Sand even though this thing is Scarf. It's probably some type of defensive set, but uh, I do a little bit of chip there. They end up locking themselves, uh, you know, into that Giga Drain. And now the reason why we've saved the Gengar is exactly you know, for this situation, because, you know, this thing's locked in, it's pretty low, I can just go into, I can actually go into the, the hot dugs as well, but I just decided to go uh, into the Gengar as my safest option here, I'm rocking the Miracle Seed just to flex on him, to be like, hey, delicious seed you got there, my guy, pause, I go for uh, the Sludge Bomb here, he does actually go first, because of course, Choice Scarf, uh, but um, it's not going to do much, you know, Gengar does a pretty good job at walling this fella, and a Sludge Bomb is going to take care of the, the Superior. So that's going to be the end of the game. I thought that was just a really interesting match, kind of just filled with some unconventional strategies. And overall, uh, a super fun game. This team is pretty interesting. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed by leaving a comment. Make sure to leave a like on the video. And I really do appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.